Hey gang, it's your good buddy Bobby B out here once again. It's a uh, beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona is where we're located right now, just north of it actually. You can see the San Francisco Peaks right behind me right there. Today we're going to do a little exploring. Uh, we're going to see if we can find a uranium mine, the Canyon Mine, which is, oh, I don't know, 30 miles south of the South Rim, I guess. So uh, we'll kind of poke around the woods and see what we can find there. Also along Grand Canyon Railway, there's uh, some, I was telling you when we were in Williams, there's, they had to build these stops every now and then to pick up wood or coal or water or whatever to fuel the engine. So we're going to go poke around and see what we can find out there. There's some ranches out there, some cattle, sheep. Uh, maybe we'll run into some antelope, some deer. I mean, who are the deer going to play with? they got to have the antelope, right? So uh, let's go see what we can find out. What do you say? You'll be the first kid on your block who can say, I've been near a uranium mine. How's that? And those are the San Francisco peaks. That's, I think it's five of the six highest peaks in Arizona. And I just read something on this sign right here. It's kind of interesting. You see that little path coming down to the right there. That's actually uh, avalanche path. There's 77 avalanche paths, I guess, up on those mountains. So uh, pretty interesting. You know, everybody thinks Arizona is nothing but desert and sun and 115 degrees. Well, we got diversity around here, avalanches as well. All right, much like we saw All right, much like we saw on Perkinsville Road, we're going to have some change in elevation here. Uh, we started, Sedona of course is 4,000 feet, Flagstaff what, 7,200 feet. We're going to get up to around 8,200 feet, and then we'll drop that back down to about 1,000 feet in the Chaparral. And then uh, we shouldn't get too, too much higher than that, because obviously Grand Canyon's closed, so we're not going to bother going up that far. But we'll see, uh, we'll see what kind of elevation we have around Red Butte, which is where this uranium mine is. Now, of course, I hope you don't think we're actually going to get into a uranium mine. But uh, we'll poke around and see. Uh, we'll get up to the gate anyway, see what's going on. Here's our friendly neighborhood law enforcement officer. Good thing I was keeping it under 90 there. So again, these are the Ponderosa Pines that we saw around Williams. A lot of logging up this way as well. Uh, still is. I had uh, a couple of roads closed a couple miles back for logging operations. So, um, you know, that brings up a good point. What's the difference between a national forest and a national park? So, this is the Kaibab National Forest. The national forests are run by the Department of Agriculture and they produce things. So, we're about conservation, but it still produces things. With the right permits and licenses, you can hunt. You fish, you can quarry rock, you can log, go logging, you have all these different activities. A national park is full on, I almost said suppression, but full on no hunting, no wood gathering, no rock collecting, no nothing. So that's kind of the difference there between the national park and the national uh, forest. So there you go. Some nice, uh, nice birch and it's really good quaking aspen through here in the fall are really, really Good day for a drive. In the snow, but uh, the fire, they thought they had it contained, if I remember correctly, and it jumped this road. This is US 180, and uh, they had to close the road for a little while to rebuild it and all this other stuff. So that was a bad one. Uh, we've had some doozies out here the way of forest fires, that's for sure. Still looks nice though. Now I know you've heard me sing this song before, but gang, you have no idea how bizarre this is. I should be fighting with travel trailers and passing motorhomes and getting stuck behind tour buses, and uh, I'm practically the only one out here right now. Um, I'm passing cars every couple minutes going the other way. Uh, it's uh, it's like the world's ended or something. It's really, really weird. So obviously we've dropped down in uh, elevation here. We don't have the pine trees anymore. We're back in the pinyon juniper life zone here. So this is definitely cattle country. A lot of moo cows around. And you know, you got your deer and your antelope running around. 
coyotes chasing jackrabbits and stuff like that. But um, so that's what we're in now. All right, we just got on Forest Road 305, and we ran across this thing, and I'm wondering what the heck it was. The mysteries of the forest, I'll tell you. All right, so this, I don't know what this thing is. It's kind of baffling me here. It's got a little door on one side, a little window on the other. It looks like there might have been a foundation here at one point. It's been there a while, whatever it is, it's all natural limestone. Huh. Anyway, back on the dirt road. Good old forest, 305. Let's see if we can find us a uranium mine. Al tank. Lots of ground beef out here at old Al tank. Don't get up, fellas. I'm just passing through. And here we are. We have found a real live uranium mine. Didn't know what to expect, wasn't expecting much, and that's pretty much what we got here. Nice head frame though. Thought there'd be people here. My understanding is a working mine, but I guess with all the craziness that's going on, they might have temporarily shut it down. Twenty-eight years I've been bouncing around the southwest, I've never come across a uranium mine. How about that? So we're maybe, I don't know, 20 miles south of the south rim of Grand Canyon. Now, interestingly enough, there was actually a uranium mine in what is now Grand Canyon National Park. And that started up in the 50s, and it's right on the south rim. It's out on Hermit Road. I go there on one of my tours. And uh, so they finally stopped mining in 1969. And I, from what I understand, the original deal was when the mine closed, the land would revert to... The national park the national park had taken it over now if you own land before the national park became a national park in 1919 you were grandfathered in you still own that land even though it's kind of within the park but it's not really in the park i guess so um then of course there's this big battle the guy doesn't want to the guy who owns or whoever owns the mine doesn't want to give it up so then they were going to build a 20-story hotel dug into the canyon wall in grand canyon national park so as you can expect, that didn't get too far, <laughs> right? So uh, they fought about it. They fought about it for years. It wasn't until 1981 that the park took over that little plot of land. And of course, it's a super fun site, you know? I mean, it's ridiculous. So uh, just, I think it was like 2008, 2000 something, they finally got it all cleaned up and capped off and whatever they do with it and everything like that. And uh, just an interesting little tidbit to the history of the area. And of course they want to, you may have heard on the news, the government wants to start prospecting for uranium again for various, you know, we want to be self-sufficient on energy, fuel, and stuff like that. And uh, of course the environmentalists are going nuts because they fear that the mining will seep into, you know, so that'll get into the groundwater and uh, really screw things up, which, you know, you don't want to mess around with uranium. But then, of course, the locals up here, they want the jobs. They need the jobs, you know. Well, just judging on that little thing that we saw, I don't really know how many jobs would be generated. I really don't. It doesn't look like much of a footprint there. So, uh, you know, you kind of see both sides of the argument, really. Hey, look at these guys. Do you think they're related? <laughs> Let's find a spot for lunch. So this is the backside of Red Butte, which is a prominent landmark on the way to and from Grand Canyon. Uh, Highway 64, the paved road we were on earlier, is on the other side of that butte. 
and uh, I haven't been on this road in years and I can't remember who the heck I was out here with Joe B was it you Sneath maybe but we did this loop and I can't remember if we camped out here maybe I don't know nice panoramic view of the San Francisco's down there So that's a good 40, 50, 60 miles away. Yeah, I'm guessing the name of this ranch is Curly Wallace. And just like the rest of us, it looks like these boys are just waiting to go back to work. Pretty modern shoot right there. It looks, uh, it doesn't look too, too old. Okay, probably mystery solved. This looks like a tank right here. Dry, but definitely looks like a cow tank. And I cheated and looked on the map, and uh, there's a cow tank here named Curly Wallace. See the fun stuff you get to do when you ride around in the woods all by yourself? These horses are looking at me like, what are you doing, you idiot? So this is kind of a shame here in the little hamlet of Valley right here. This uh, Flintstones themed RV park has been here for decades. It's got to be 40 years. And last year was the official last year. It's been in disrepair for some time now. And uh, it's going to be called Raptor Ranch. And from what I understand, that's going to be a full on amusement park. Sign right there, Raptor Ranch. So, kind of a shame. Time marches on, I guess, right? You know, even the buildings are like, you know, like the Flintstones house and everything like that. And it was fun. There are kids running around. There's a pool back there. Various activities. Really family oriented. So we'll see what it, give it a year or two and we'll see what it looks like. And this is the little village of Valley, V-A-L-L-E. Really nothing more. This used to be a, a stop sign out in the middle of nowhere with uh, a gas station and maybe a cheesy hotel and an airport. So uh, this is built up, believe it or not. <laughs> Foiled again. I wanted to get out to the Valley Railroad siding and I was saying there's a ranch out there that I wanted to check out but apparently we're not welcome and apparently there's more to valley than meets the eye I had no idea there was a little village back here I would imagine we're only about a half hour from Grand Canyon Village so I would imagine some of the people that live here actually work up at the National Park. So this is kind of fun and this is another one of those things that probably I only find funny or interesting. So this is called SP Road, right? SP, Southern Pacific Railroad. This leads out to the railroad. Clever, huh? Well, we called an audible here, so uh, we went one for two on the day with major attractions. Uh, didn't quite work out with the railroad thing, but uh, we're gonna take a little back road through Spring Valley and then head south to parks. I mean, anybody can take an interstate, right? We like roads like this way better. We got Freddie Mercury and the boys doing their thing in the background. There's a truck coming the other way. Oh, wow, cool little ranch right there. Pretty area. Now I guess there's burn piles and then there's burn piles. So I've never seen burn pile this big and there's a whole bunch of them out here. So uh, I'm assuming that's what they are. So they'll come out here and set fire to these guys and uh, burn off the debris that they've collected from the forest floor 
as well as the ash contains nutrients that goes right into the soil so that's very good for the uh, very good for the forest as well but man that's they get some big burn piles out here man so it appears we've reached a little area called Spring Valley here and uh, in the distance there you can see on the right hand side there is Arizona Snowball Ski Area which of course is closed unfortunately I haven't skied there in many 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 moons but one of these days I'll get out there hopefully well it's not gonna be this year that's for sure so there's some uh, there's some houses out here and stuff like that uh, really a couple nice ones some really really sharp log cabins and stuff like that but I guess this is a mixture of vacation getaway and that looks like a working ranch or farm or whatever man what a nice area back here I'm really glad uh, we did this little detour here I forget what um, what zone this is for Arizona game and fish but I bet you if you get drawn for a ticket out of here for elk or deer or turkey or whatever they're gonna do pretty darn good I imagine there's all kinds of wildlife back here of course I'm blowing down the road doing 35 40 miles an hour at times so I'm scaring you know <laughs> anything living is getting the hell out of my way but I imagine if you did it right you'd see plenty of wildlife around here Now according to the map and signs with camels on them, this apparently is the old Veal Wagon Road. Back in the 1850s, I think it was, late 1850s, the U.S. Army was trying to figure out where they wanted to put a railroad out here. And of course, you know, they're out here surveying and everything like that. And in this area, they actually tested out using camels as pack animals. Kind of worked, kind of didn't. Uh, turns out camels aren't the easiest creatures to work with. Um, they had Arab, they imported Arab camel drivers, if you will, and um, that's what they tried to do out in this area. I'm pretty amazed that I stumbled across this road. It's uh, rather interesting in Arizona history, transportation history. Uh, out in a town called Quartzsite, there's actually a uh, a memorial to High Jolly, which was, he was one of the camel jockeys out here. Just uh, crazy stories, man. And now up here on that mountain, I'm kind of wondering if that's Kendrick or Sitgreaves, but you can see some of the damage from those fires I was telling you about earlier. Still a lot of dead trees up there. Uh, blow downs as well as still standing. See, that's what you get when you don't take the interstate. You get fun stuff like this. gang I think that's pretty much the ball game for today uh, good day today you know what the heck kind of winging it a little bit we got away with a few we didn't get away with the sum you know but uh, you know a couple things you got to remember on trips like this you know some days you win some days you lose some days it rains think about that for a minute so uh, headed back down to Sedona now we're uh, coming up on parks and hit the interstate so it's gonna you know run of the mill after this so uh that's about it really um got to see our uranium mine didn't get to see the railroad so much but took a fantastic fantastic back roads detour through spring valley that was really 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 cool so uh signing off until next time it's your good buddy bobby b catch you later